Hello, welcome to Monday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. And today we have the follow-up um, to our biggest video ever. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, we released a video called uh, Sudoku with only four given digits. That video is now uh, trotting along at about 2.7 million views, um, which undoubtedly makes the Sudoku in it the most famous Sudoku in the history of Sudoku, uh, which is an amazing feat for Ard van der Vettering, who designed the puzzle. Um, and Ard has sent us a follow-up puzzle. Now this is, um, again, you can see he's quite deliberately, I'm sure, only included four given digits. Um, and there's a couple of extra rules to this one that I'm going to run through in a moment. Uh, I just want to mention, though, the two competitions we've had running to win the um, extra wallets. And we have decided the winner of the Patreon um, competition. Uh, you guys had to solve Ashish Kumar's um, bonus puzzle on Patreon. Um, we then uh, listed basically all of the correct solutions we'd had, numbered them, and then we asked Excel to pick a random number. And I can tell you the winner is Targ, T-A-H-G. So well done, Targ. We'll be in touch about your wallet. Um, and then for Kurt Hugo Snyder's competition, um, to win the other wallet, well, we have been inundated with so many amazing replies. I mean, literally, literally hundreds, um, over 30 videos. Um, so I've been going through them. And um, what I've done is I've created a short list which I've sent to Mark and Mark is going to go through them today and we will hopefully announce a winner tomorrow. So uh, yeah, look out for tomorrow's video um, to, to hear who's won uh, that competition. But I mean, startling response. Now let's get back to this. Ard's puzzle. So you can see that we've got some dominoes in the grid. Um, so if we've got horizontal dominoes, these two cells would have to be two apart. So they could be, you know, three and five or something like that, that would be allowed. If they're vertical dominoes, they've got to be three apart. So um, they'd have to be things like nine and six, that would be allowed. So that's how this, the, these sort of uh, gray cells work going across the diagonal. Now there's also an anti-night constraint in this puzzle, uh, just as there was in the, in, in the massive video. So how does that work? Well, uh, if this four was a chess knight, it could jump to a few different squares in the grid, um, those ones. Now those yellow squares cannot be fours because they could be reached by a chess knight in this position. So we must make sure that that condition holds throughout the puzzle. Apart from that, that's all. Four given digits is all we get. What we've got to do is work out how to solve it. So if you want to have a go, I, rem I, you know, I can't recommend it more. Just click on the link under the video and that will take you to this web page where you can play along on whichever device takes your fancy. And with that, I'm going to have a go. Let's get cracking. Um, and in fact, we can write in that digit, can't we? Because if we know that this square here, because it's in a horizontal domino, it's either got to be two greater or two less than a four. Well, it can't be a two, so it's got to be a six. Oops, uh, six. Let's have a look at this one, therefore. So this one has got to be three or nine. That one has got to be one, five or seven, I suppose. So they're always going to keep flipping their parity, aren't they? We're going to have even numbers, odd numbers. Now these ones are going to flip back even again, I guess. Um, so four, uh, Actually, four is impossible. So if four is impossible, this can never be a one. So I'm going to tidy up that pencil mark now. And if this can't be a one, do we get a no? We don't get a knock on effect on this one because five could turn into the three, but we still really um, sort of reduce the number of digits. So this one's got to be two, eight. Uh, the seven can't go to a four, look. Ah, so the seven can never go to anything. So this can't be seven. So in fact, that's five, which means that one's three. And that one we still don't know about, but that's good. We've got, we've actually got a start here. I'm tempted. Yeah, look at this. We've got a knight's move restraint operating in box four because these threes um, eliminate these squares by natural Sudoku that this three could jump to that square and that square if it was a chess knight. So only those two squares can be a three. 
which means the 3 in the bottom box there has to be on the right hand side. Let's carry on doing dominoes, shall we? So we got two eight into this one, so the two could go to a four, and the eight could go to a six, so that's very restricted as well. Can't see how to limit that any further though. Let's look at this square. So the four could go to a one or a seven, the six could go to a three or a nine, so the nine is impossible, but the three is possible. So that's one, three, or seven. Then this must be the one can go to a three. Ah, the one can't go to a three because of the threes here. So if the one can't go to a three, this square can never be a one because it can only go to a three in this direction. Now, does that matter? No, not quite. The three can go to the six, the seven can go to the four, so we don't get a sort of rebound effect from eliminating the one from um, this square. Um, right, so let's carry on again. So we, we know this can be a one, it can be a five, and it can't be a nine, actually, but the seven can give us a five. So this, this becomes a one or a five. In the vertical direction, this must be a four, a two, or an 8, all of which look possible. This one therefore can be a 4. It can't be a 2, this 4 can't go to a 2 here. This could go to a 6 though. Uh, is, that, is that all? Uh, yeah it is, because this can't be a 6, this can't go to an 8, which is quite cool. So that square, therefore, has to be 1, 7, or 3. Now, can we do better than that in any of these squares? Ah, we know this isn't a 3, of course, because of the 3 up here. I just missed that. Typical. So this becomes 1 or 7. Ah, so that can never be 6, because 1 or 7 always goes to the 4, and that's all it can go to. So this becomes a, a 4. That one is not 4, therefore. Ah, and we can't reach 8. 8 is not within 2 of 4, so this becomes 2. This has got to be 5 now. And can we do more? Fives in this box? Not quite. We get a 5 down to 2 squares. Twos, twos have got to be up there, look. This one obviously is a knight's move away from that one. Fours. Ooh, oh, no. That one can still be a four. Four can be in three positions in this box. Ah, but I tell you what, that can't be a six. Because if that's a six, where do we put a six in this box? Answer, nowhere, because a six would... Let me show you. i put a six here. Rules out a 6 from those squares. That one's a 1 or a 7. And this can't be a 6 because it's a knight's move away. So that cannot be 6. This has to be 4. That places 4 over in one of those two squares. That one being a knight's move away from this one. Uh, one second. Let me just look at this. Right, so this one now has to be 7, because it can't be 3. The 7 gives us the 1 in the corner. And we've actually done quite well with our dominoes now. The 4 means that's a 2, because it can't be an 8. This square has to be a 6 or an 8. So if it was 6, we'd have... That would be a six. Does that matter? There's quite a... Uh, I'm not sure. Um, let's carry on. Maybe I have to look at these ones now. That would be the natural place to look. Let's just see if we can tidy up any more pencil marking. I can place a four up there. The 
the threes we already know about, the fives I've pencil marked already, fives down here, no. No, okay, let's, let's go up to this domino then. So this one has got to be a one or a seven. That's reasonably good, isn't it? In fact, that's beautiful. Look at this, that can't be a seven. Because if it's a seven, where do I put a seven in this box now? This seven rules out those three squares. This seven rules out that one. Oh, that's gorgeous. So this is a one. And that face is one here. This is typical art. It's just, you know, it's just elegant beyond your wildest dreams. So this is a one now. Ones have to go over there somewhere. These three squares are seven, eight, and nine. Oops, seven, eight, nine. That one has got to be a three because it, it's the only way we can get a cell that's two cells apart from a one or two digits apart from a one. The three means that's a six because obviously three can't give us a zero here. Six is restricting this box a little bit. We, we get it down to one of three positions. That one, therefore, has to be four or eight. I can't see how that's restricted. It probably is, but I'm not seeing how. So if this is four or eight, this can be um, one, it can be seven, it can be five. I'm not sure how to restrict that any further. Um, which means this one, ah, this one, ah, okay, well we can, because this one simply cannot be a three, so this one can't be a one. Which, and, and that means the five here would have to go to a seven, and the seven would have to go to a five or a nine. So again, it's not brilliant. Ah, but the one now, is forcing forcing the box. Oh, that's very clever. So this, that's the only square a one can go into. Now that rules a one out from the bottom. Ones can't go here or here, so ones have to go in one of those two sort of diagonal cells in box six, and ones have to be in one of those two cells in box one. Okay, um, now what do we do next? That is the question. Answer, I have no clue. Um, threes, are they restricted? A little bit. I can lock a three into one of three squares there, look. Twos are a little bit restricted. And the reason for that is, look, we've got pencil mark twos in those two squares in box one. Now that means neither of those two squares can be a two because if we try a two, that would be ruled out and that would be ruled out. It's obviously the same for this square, so so two has to be in one of these three squares. It's not brilliant though, is it? It's not. Ah, no, look at the six now. I looked at this before, the six, if this is a six, that, if we look at this box, this, these sixes operate very powerfully. So the six is ruled out of those squares, this one by a knight's move from that square, and this one rules out a six here. So we'd have to put a six in this square. And ordinarily we might say, well, that doesn't do much, but it does. Because this square <laughs> sees that 
this square sees that. So a six gets forced here. And now our pencil mark sixes here are impossible. This one sees a knight's move, this one in the row, there would be nowhere to place a six in that box. Good grief, I'm not sure if that is the next step that's intended here, but I'm taking it because it's, well, it's beautiful and it gives me a digit. So this is three and six now. Now, so now we limit six to one of three squares in that box. This eight, does it, I'm not sure what this eight does for us, to be honest. It doesn't seem to do very much at all. Uh, right. Goodness me. Um, so what I'm now trying to do is to identify if there are any weak cells or... That square is a little bit restricted, isn't it? That can't be one, two, three, four, five, six or seven actually. But it can be eight or nine. I think. Well, the same is true of that square. That square sees one, two, and three, sees this two, obviously, sees four, five, six, seven. That square is also eight or nine. So uh, now, oh, now we've got two pairs in column three. So we need one, two, and five into those squares. Now, that one can't be two. That one can't be one. That one can't be restricted at all. Wow. Okay, so what am I meant to do with this? This five is quite cool in, in row three, but it's not quite good enough because we've got, it rules out those three squares from being five. That five rules out that one. I don't think we can rule a five out from this. Oh, hang on. No, we can. If this was a five, I couldn't put a five in this column because it, this would be a knight's move away from this. Oh, and in fact, you can see it as well in this box. If I put a five here, the two pencil mark fives become impossible in box four. So that's not a five. So the five is over there. And that, well, that's brilliant because that gives me a seven here. That's got to be a nine now. This has got to be three different. So this is a four. We've done our dominoes now. Seven. Nine. So surely this is going to give me loads of stuff, isn't it? Please. It's not giving me anything. Ah, oh, so the, well, that squares a two or an eight. Is that what I'm meant to get from this? That this square is a two or an eight? Why does that matter? Oh, it does matter. It does matter. Look, this can't be a two. Because if it's a two, where do we put the two in this box? Well, from our pencil marking, it's got to go here. And now there's no valid position for a two in this box. These are ruled out. This one sees that one by knight's move, and that two takes care of the last cell. So actually, that is important. This one cannot be a two. This is an eight which means there's a two down there. Eight. Eight 
eights here and here. Oh, twos, maybe they're more profitable. Um, that's not a two anymore. Five can... Five's pencil marked into this. No, they're not. So five's... Uh, five can go here. So five's in one of three positions over on this side. This square can't be it. A whole lot of things can it if we look at the pencil marking we've already got here so this square can't be one two three it can't be four now can it be five no it can't be five because because of the pencil marking in this box look if I put a five in this square that rules out those two and that one by night's move so this is, this is not one, two, three, four, or five, or six, or eight. Now can it be, can it be both seven and nine? I think it can. No, it can't be nine, but it can't be nine for a complicated reason. Look at this, if this is nine, this square can't be a nine. So we'd get a nine here, a nine in one of those two squares. Therefore, there would have to be a nine in these two squares down in this box. Well, that's not possible because this nine rules out both of those squares. Wow, okay, so in fact, we know this is a seven, which means there's a seven over here. got so many pencil marks now it's getting confusing this is seven must be on this side this seven sees that square so the seven gets placed in this box that locks a seven down here seven <laughs> this, is, this is completely it's completely balmy isn't it it's mad as a badger um, Okay, so I've got, just doesn't open the puzzle up though. Two, three, four, six, nine. Ah. Oh, yes, look at this, this square. This square sees a four and a three by knight's move. So this square can only be six, eight or nine. Now watch this. Can this be eight or nine? No, because look, we've got our eight, nine pair here and they rule out both eight and nine from this square because whichever order they're in, oh, this is so cool. Whichever order they're in, doesn't matter. They, they see this square, both of them. So if this was an eight and this was a nine, the nine sees it by knight's move, the eight sees it naturally and vice versa. That square cannot be an eight or a nine and therefore it has to be a six. Now that places a six down here, but I've seen, I think it's gonna do more over this side because if neither of those can be a six, we know this is a six. And that's taking up all sorts of pencil marks. That's shifting the one, isn't it, over into this square, which in turn is shifting the two downwards, which in turn is placing the five, which forces this to be a five. And now this two forces that to be a two, oh, that to be a two, which means that must be a six, 
uh, not six, hang on, what have I done wrong? No, the six is down here. This, the three is not here. These squares have got to be four and five. That's resolved by this five down there. The four sees that square by knight's move. So this is the four. In fact, that four would have also done the same trick. The seven rules out that square. That can't be a seven. So the seven gets placed. This is an eight, nine. This must be eight or nine. That can't be two. Oh, that can't be two. So that flurry of activity, that's got to be powerful, hasn't it? In terms of these two squares now, we need nine and six. Oh, well, that's good. Because look, if this is a six, nine pair, that can no longer be a nine. That's an eight, that's an eight, that's a nine, that's an eight. These two squares are a three, nine pair now. Let's check the knight's moves to see whether we can... No, we can't. Okay, so those three squares are one, three, and seven. Now, is that any use? Yes, the seven and the three, see that square? So that one is a one, this is a three, seven pair. The ones now must go here and here. And we've done our ones now. So this can't be a nine, so the nine's in one of those squares. Oh, and that gives us another nine. Have a look at the grid, see if you can spot how. This is cool. Nine here, nine here. So nines can't go in those squares. Now we can't put a nine in either of those squares because if we do, it rules out both of those squares because of the knight's move constraint. So in fact, none of those squares are a nine. This is a nine. That nine obviously sees that square, so that must be a nine. That fixes the nine six over here. Which means one of those two squares is a six. That one can't be a nine now. That one can't be a nine, so this is the nine. That fixes the nine and the three. The three must live down here. This square's got to be an eight. This is an eight now because of the eight up there. This is an eight because of this eight over there. And we're left with, and that one, look, we've got three and seven to place in row four. That three tells you that one can't be a three. So that's a seven, which means that's a seven. This is a, th a three over this side. That fixes the seven and the eight in the center. And, okay, so let's look at these two squares. They look like an easy win. Three and five. Actually, they're not, are they? That doesn't actually resolve itself, but it does lock fives into those squares, which means that in column eight and column nine, we've located all of the fives we're ever gonna find. So where do we place the five? In column seven. Can't be in any of those squares. Can't be there. It's gotta be here. That five sees that square. So that's got to be a three, five, five, two. This two is all powerful over this box. It rules two, four, and six into position. That forces the two down there. Two must live in one of these cells. Ah, the two there helps us out. So two, nine. That nine actually was resolvable before. I just didn't spot it. Um, this square we can write in, presumably, that's a four. Over on this side, we need three and six. This six tells us which the order is. So that's the three, that's the six, that's the six, that's the three, that's the three. That's gonna be a six to complete the row. Let's remove three six from here and have a quick scan and check if we look like we're on the right track. You can see we need four and five 
So that's going to be a four. That should be a five check. Yes. Wow. As usual from Ard. Just, it's just so cool. There's just so much going on. I mean, I don't know how many Knights Move Sudokus I've done in my life. It, it's a lot. I mean, it is a lot. And it's very rare to get a puzzle that uses so many different types of techniques. Um, yeah, the, 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 the five here, eliminating a five from this row was absolutely beautiful. The eight, nine pair here, eliminating eight, nine from that square was beautiful. It, it's just, yeah, as usual. I mean, this is why uh, he's made the most famous Sudoku ever. Thanks very much to Ard van der Vettering. Thanks to his friend Ard Doan for sending us the puzzle. And thanks to you guys for watching. We'll be back later during self-isolation, keeping up our two videos a day. Uh, so do watch Mark later on um, on Cracking the Cryptid.